Hello, West Sacramento, and welcome to the first episode of Flippin' Tacos. West Sacramento as we see it. I'm Armando Omega. And I am Yvonne Scarborough. And today we have our special guest from Capital West Realty and all-around good guy, Chris Palmadesi. Hey, hey. Welcome, Chris. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Now, since this is our first podcast, let's talk about the how and the why we are doing this. So, first off, um, Yvonne and I love to listen to podcasts, and we... Uh, started listening to podcasts once we, I think we went to a comedy show once with uh, our significant others and we yeah. started listening to their podcasts and then it kind of exploded into something different. Like we listened to Well, you politi- start to listen to one and then you start to listen to others and the next thing you know, you're hooked on them. <laughs> yeah. So like, there's a ton of different types of podcasts out there. Um, some are comedy, some are political. Some of you may have heard of, uh, what are they called? Ben Talks? Ted Talks. TED Talks, right? They're like um, motivational type speaking oh. type things. Yeah. Well, our purpose is to uh, promote the city of West Sacramento, its businesses, and its events while having some fun while doing so. And uh, I'll let Yvonne explain how we came up with the name Flippin' Tacos. Well, we came up with the name because it was a play on our ethnicities and um, at the risk of not offending or of offending anyone, I don't, I'll let you guess what our ethnicities are based on the title of our podcast. Yeah. So we like the, I mean, flipping tacos uh, has nothing to do with West Sacramento, Uh, just really has to do with uh, our our background. Um, So we thought that the name was kind of cool, and we have a little logo that, with a talking taco. (laughs) Um, So that was pretty cool. So if you happen to like uh, what you hear today... Like us on Facebook or uh, hashtag us on Twitter at f- hashtag Flipping Tacos or subscribe to us via iTunes. And tacos is T-A-L-K-O-S. Yes, like we're talking. So we're so clever know. that um, <laughs> you know it allows us to, to come up with such crazy and amazing things. So yes, um, thank you for adding that. Um, <laughs> So eventually, like the more listeners we have, the uh, means that the more people that are connected to our city and connected to the opportunities that we have in our city. And we want people to tune into us to if they want to know what's going on around town or hear like maybe the latest restaurant that's open, or just the word on the street, or they just want to hear our awesome opinions on things. They can hopefully tune into us. Yeah, and that's why we we picked Chris to be here today because. You know, he's like a, he's kind of like West Sac royalty <laughs> when, you come, when you come think about it. Because, you know, the Palmanesi name is, you know, it's it just, it's synonymous with, with West Sac, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So it was a no-brainer. Well, yeah. 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 We didn't even argue over it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> In fact, we were like joking, saying our first guest, and we both said the same guy, Chris Palmanesi. Bam. So, yeah, and it was like, a, yeah, exactly, a no-brainer. So... We're gonna have we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna talk about some local uh, events and some local news that are coming out of West Sacramento. And we're also gonna uh, hit Chris up with what we call our flipping tacos six pack. The six pack of questions. Three of them are basic business questions, since he is like the West Sacramento uh, real estate monster here in town. <laughs> um, it is. It, you know, he's he's the man when it comes to real estate. So three of those questions are based on his business and what he offers to clients here in West Sacramento in the area. Uh, but three of the questions are kind of mystery, personal <laughs> questions. What? Yep. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't tell you that. Well, yeah, that uh, but yeah, that's right. And you sign the contract saying that you have yeah. to stay here Don't the whole me. time and you have to answer. <laughs> we actually have a, a lie detector test that we're going to hook you up uh, with beforehand. That's what those little lines are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. We'll know when you're lying. All right, so before we get to the news and local events, we're going to talk about, because um, it's getting hot outside, and I was thinking about installing a whole house fan. Uh-oh. What? Do you know how to do that? Well, I, I know there's YouTube, and uh, I can probably learn on YouTube, right? Are you suggesting something else? So you're going to cut a hole in your ceiling 
Actually, Mia is going to allow you to cut a hole in your seat. Well, I do it on when she's working and I have the day off. So How hard it'd could be a nice be, surprise. Right? How hard could it be to yeah. cut a hole in your seat? Yeah. Yeah. Mia, Sounds uh, easy. Yeah. So, do you have any suggestions on what I can do? Well, wouldn't you feel better having a licensed electrician doing that? Why not call Parks Electric? That way, you can have the assurance that it was done right the first time. Well, that sounded like you, you that was pre-thought. <laughs> <laughs> Parks Electric, that's, I know Johnny I Park. always say that, like when people ask about now, house fans, that's what I say every time. Chris, have you used Johnny Park? I Parks? have, actually. I've used him uh, numerous times, actually for my own personal, for, for my house. Um, I have a couple of rentals in West Act that I use them for. And then, of course, if my clients, who I'm selling their home, if they need uh, a referral for an electrician, always call Johnny. He's right there on the spot. Johnny on the spot. All right. Now, it, the lie detector noticed when you said a couple of oh. rentals, it went. Oh. Yeah, yikes. A couple dozen. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. So, Park Ele- Parks Electrics. Uh, tell us where they're located, Yvonne. So, they are a West Sacramento-based company, and you can see their work all over those DIY and HGTV shows. You know, all those house crashers, bath crashers, yard core, kitchen crashers, etc. So, I, I've seen Johnny on TV, and he's my, well, I always like to call him my buddy from New York. New so, York. my buddy from New York. So, you can, uh, you can find information about John, John's, uh, Johnny Park's electric company at johnparkelectric.com to get all your information, to get a hold of them. Uh, if you're lucky enough, you may be talking to his beautiful wife, Claudia. Who is your sister, Yvonne? She is yes. my sister. Come so, on, yeah, it just so happens that, yeah. yeah, I was wanting to put a whole house fan in. He's going to get a ton of business, and he's going to come to me and say, thank you, Armando. <laughs> I wanted to install this whole house fan for you for free. All right, so now it's time for our news and events. Yvonne, take us okay, to our so local news and events. What is going on? Uh, Rayleigh Field is having a Mommy and Me event at the ballpark on Wednesday, June 18th from 10 to noon. This is a free event for kids six and under and their parents. There will be bounce houses, snacks, and a visit from the River Cats mascot, Dinger. We are so happy. We're, I'm sorry. We are so lucky to have Rayleigh Field here. This is a great organization that participates in its community. And you can get tickets at uh, www.rayleighfield.com. Um, Wait. So... We're lucky to have the family that runs Rayleigh Field and the River Cats in our in our town. Yep. They participate a lot in our local charities. I know for uh, Our Lady of Grace School, they sent Dinger out for our uh, golf tournament one year. Um, they're always donating different prizes and you know seats to you know very they, generous. Yeah, very generous. Uh, and your kids, didn't they just go to camp there, Chris? They did. Yeah, uh, so Christian went to a baseball camp there. Had yeah. a great time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anthony went too. They yeah. really had a good time. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, if you can support whatever they do, and they are, they're always doing things for the people of Sacramento, but we're so lucky to have them in West Sacramento. Uh, so uh, go visit them. They're right down the street, and they I think they're having like they've had a beer fest there recently, or they're going to have one. So uh, hopefully you didn't miss that. Um, uh, yeah. And speaking of Dinger, also showed up at the Relay for Life last year. Did he? Yes, he did. He did. That's coming up. And, yes, it is coming up this Saturday, uh, the 21st, at Our Lady of Grace School, which is at 1990 Linden Road. And it starts at 9 o'clock. And this is an event that has a lot of participation from our locals. Um, Our motto is on team Eat Right. And our guest, Chris's wife, Tish Palmadesi, has raised $1,800 for her team, Jill's sister, so far. So... They're doing really well. I will be out there, too, to do some laps to support people. And uh, this major event usually raises about forty to $50,000 for the American Cancer Society. So it's awesome. a really big deal. Yeah. And Tish Palmadesi, Chris's wife, um, her team, Curzy Shore, last year raised about $7,000. So, yep. you know, we, we're lucky to have a lot of people here in this town that participate in fundraisers and things like that to help people that um, need it, like people who are, um, you know, the American Cancer Society has a lot of programs that help people that are, are suffering from cancer and also family members that are um, uh, of people that have cancer or that have maybe uh, passed away from cancer. So they have a lot of programs that assist people um, 
to get through that process. So come out this Saturday, do a couple laps, donate a couple of uh, dollars. I'm going to be on the Team Eat Right with uh, Chris White, uh, one of the co-owners of Capital Bowl. So we'll be out there talking about healthy ways to uh, hopefully stay cancer-free and fight cancer. And uh, it's always a good good time. Um, so it's a 24-hour walk. Um, Chris, you didn't you have camped out last year? Didn't yep, you? last last two years. It's an yeah. awesome event. Yeah, awesome event. It's yeah. a good time. Twenty four hours, spend the night there. Um, really good time. I think they they typically bring like pizzas in at midnight. Yeah, yeah. That was, play yeah, a movie. Fun. They play a movie for the kids. Yeah, so it's a good night. time. Good time, and uh, hopefully we'll raise our forty to fifty thousand like we do every year, and um, you know, uh, help people that that need it. All right. Um, okay, what else is going on? Oh, some good news. Um, in just his second year of playing, local West Sac kid Ryan Pratt made the collegiate All-American team for rugby. He will actually be playing a few games on the East Coast, and one of them will be at the legendary Dartmouth College. His proud parents are Rick and Shannon Pratt, owners of Capital Flooring and Design, right here in town, located on Lake Washington Boulevard. So that is really a cool thing. Yeah. I didn't know it was only his second year. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, especially for a kid who, if I'm not mistaken, he didn't play in high school. Then all of a sudden he comes in and bam, plays in college and is a star. That's very impressive. He's a monster, too. (laughs) (laughs) He's a big dude. He's a big dude. He's a big dude, and, and, you know, he's dedicated, and he really enjoys it, and his parents are super, super proud of him. And I know that um, I think they'll be making the trip. Uh, to the East Coast to watch. I think it's like four or five games that they have. And um, so hopefully they'll be able to... um, Some of his games, when they played, he played at St. Mary's College. And some of the games, like the national championship game and some of the playoff games, where they were televised online. Or or I don't know if that's televised online. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. Uh, They're aired online. And um, so it was... You know we can we can watch that. So hopefully that's kind of more of the same when it comes to watching his games online. When it comes to it, all right. Good job, Ryan Pratt. And oh, and congratulations! He just graduated too from St. Mary's College. Oh, so awesome! Yeah, a lot that's of good right. things happening in the Pratt family. Him. Very And cool. again, uh, Capital Flooring is a, a flooring um, company here. Actually, technically they're on Industrial Boulevard. Okay, but, I wasn't you know, quite sure where the break off. I don't is. want to confuse anybody. Okay, it's by the port. Yeah. If you can find the port, you'll find them. Very easy to find. I've yes. used them numerous times. There you go. See, Great Chris, company. When you have multiple rentals, I mean, you're going to have to have I, flooring I, issues. i got to have so the long. contacts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 <I'm just kidding. laughs> also, what's new in town is that we uh, there's a few businesses that opened up uh, that we'd like to give a shout-out to to show our support. Um, a microbrewery, Yellow Brewing Company. It is located at 1520 Terminal Street, where you can try a flight of beers or brew your own. And I think they are having some kind of promotional deal that Armando can tell us about that you've already participated in. Well, Chris and I, we purchased a punch card. And I think that, in hindsight, we probably I should have bought two. Yeah. <laughs> because the beers there at Yolo Brew are great. I had three. They had eight on tap. I had three of them. I heard you had four. Well, I had, I did. Technically, I had four beers, but three of, di- three of, three different beers, and I, I wasn't really in charge of the fourth one. It was given to me. Um, <laughs> I but, didn't know that mattered, but anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it does. It, it's, it's a technicality that you can get off on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah. Anyways, so Chris, you enjoyed the beers? It was. I had uh, the Pilsner. I liked it so much. I all three of mine were the Pilsners. Yeah, and I tried. I think they had a. Um, I had a Pilsner, I think, yep. the first one, and then I had an IPA, which Chris is uh, very opposed to yeah. drinking. Is <laughs> not a big fan of the yeah, IPA. He's not a big fan of the IPA. Then just, I had, just ask Rick Hart. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then I had the um, the what was that one? It was the Belgium the Ale. Belgium, yeah. I thought that one was good too. Yeah, had a had a different taste. Yep. In fact, uh, our our friend Andy, who's your husband. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was funny. We asked him, so what do you, what do you think of the taste? And he was like, um, licking his lips. Um, <laughs> this is after a few years. Yeah, um, <laughs> and then he, and I go, yeah, why don't you have another sip? Cause uh, maybe you can get a better idea. Of it. No, but really Mike has a lot of great plans for Yolo brew. And, um, 
go out there and check it out. It, it, you can brew your own beer. I think it ends up being, I think we did the math, like uh, if you brew your own beer, it comes out to like $2 a beer or something, yeah, like, something that. like that. Yeah, something like that. Some crazy cheap That's number. That's pretty good. You bottle it, bottle it yourself. You can make your own uh, label. Really cool. Yeah. Great uh, Christmas presents or, you know, it's a great deal to have in your uh, in your fridge. So you have your own, yeah. have your own beer there. Um, also, can we go back to why don't you like IPAs? Is it a flavor thing or an yeah, experience? It's, no, just a flavor thing. I'm more of a light beer kind of kind of guy. IPA just has a little too much kick for me. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> anyway. oh, oh, so the punch card. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. The punch card, you get 20 beers for 60 bucks, which ends up $3 a beer. Um, and normally, like, if you go in there and have a beer, that same, that pint, it's a, it's $5. Cool. So you save a couple bucks on each beer. And, um, I know we, we were, we couldn't wait for this place to open because we talked about the party we're going to have as we had, I think collectively we had 80 beers, uh, <laughs> that we bought, um, from four different people. So, but it's, a it, go check it out. Go check it out. Mike is a great guy. He'll explain to you, um, you know, all about what's going on and, and, and what he has coming up. And last, um, and coincidentally with the word YOLO in it, is YOLO Euros and Burgers Sports Bar and Lounge, which is on 1345 Berkeley, which you could walk there from where we are. Um, they have really good prices and good food, and um, they had $2 drafts. Shock Top and Sierra Nevada were on tap when I was there, so that was wow. really good beer. It's not like Bud Light, not that there's anything wrong with Bud Light. I'm just saying it's good beer. And I think that is it for local news and goings on. Well, you know, for that place, uh, I went there on Sunday, and Sunday is typically a sports day, yeah, right? So they had, I think, like eight TVs on the wall uh, and all the drink specials, and we were the only people there. And so if you just want to try out a place with, you know, with cheap beers or whatever or or you know sports bar food go try it because the food wasn't bad the food wasn't bad at all it was pretty good and uh you always got to support these local guys trying to make it mm-hmm. um because you know we all you know we, like i personally like the eatery um and we lost it mm-hmm. cause I don't, you know for whatever reason but we want to try to support them as as much as possible absolutely yeah definitely all right so we have before we get into our six-pack of questions, are you ready, Chris? As ready as I'm going to be. Okay, we're going to do one more. Um, we have a little spot for for Sierra Heart Auto Care. Yes. So, do you want me to talk about it? That's all you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I told I told uh, Rick that you were going to be doing the spot, and he was very excited. Okay. Well. Then don't be that guy or gal who waits until it's 104 degrees outside to get your AC checked and serviced. That ain't cool. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. <yeah. laughs> be ahead of the game and take your car to Sierra Heart Auto at 1050 Triangle Court here in West Sacramento. You can call them at 916-371-8026 or on the web at www.sierraheart.net. And that's H-A-R-T. All right. And I've used Sierra Heart. Uh, Chris, absolutely. Clear heart. I know Yvonne and Andy have used Sierra Heart, and Andy is a mechanic. So, so you know when mechanics need to get their cars worked on, take it Sierra Heart. Sierra Heart is the place to go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We're very happy with the work they've done for us. Good. All right, now here is what everybody's been waiting for. At least I've been waiting for. I want to hear how these go. Dun, but dun, our dun. six pack of questions. Three questions pertaining to Chris's business, and three fun questions that we have for Chris. So, uh, Yvonne, go ahead and ask him the first couple. Okay. So, Chris, how long have you been in real estate, and what got you into it? Ooh. So, I got my license in 2002. Uh, At the time, I was going to Sac State, and I was studying real estate and land use affairs. And (laughs) There you go. And so I just decided, you know, at the time while I was going to school, might as well make some extra income on the side and sell sell real estate. Uh, my uncle was actually in the business. He was working for Century 21, and he's the one that kind of thought of it. And so I said, yeah, why, why not? So back in 2002, I was 
uh, bartending at the Pheasant Club. I was going to school and studying for my real estate uh, license. So ended up getting the license in late 2002 and um, started practicing in early 2003. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. I remember like one of the first um, advertisements you guys did. Did you do some with your uncle at one point? Not advertising, no. Okay. I remember some. you guys put flags on people's lawns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I thought to myself, it must have been been like 2003. Yeah, it was early, yeah. And I was like, man, they let like 12-year-olds do real estate. That's how (laughs) young you looked in the picture. I'm like, I I will say my original picture, I still look back at that and think, oh, boy. You still have your fade? Yeah, probably. Oh man! Hey, hey, the fade, the fade's still in. Okay, well, two thousand three. So you've been doing it eleven years. Yeah, you've been doing a good job. Yeah, thank you. All right. Do you like it? I do. Good. Yeah, I do. I it's you know um, get to help people, and uh, especially first time home buyers is the best thing. I, I remember one time I sold the house to a young couple, and when I gave them their keys, they started crying. It was like, Aww. and it didn't occur to me, you know, for it was just like here, here's your, here's your keys. You know, and they, she started crying. I was like, whoa, you know, it's, this is something that I'm helping them really achieve their, one of their life goals. So that is was, really neat. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, good. You didn't go, awkward. <laughs> no. <Let it> go. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I know Chris. So you would do that. And he sold us both our houses. So, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Go ahead. Do the oh, next okay. one. Okay. Uh, a few years back, you and your partner, Marty Swingle, started um, Capital West Realty. How would you describe your office, and how does it differ from any other real estate office here in West Sacramento? Wow. So, a little background. So, Marty and I used to work for another company here in West Sac, and a few years back, we decided, you know, this may be a good time to um, venture off and uh, kind of shake things up a, a little bit. And so, we... We met, we had a few meetings and decided that it was a great time and we felt uh, both of us could really uh, take over the West Sac market and that was our our goal basically. Um, How we differ, number one, we are a small office. We have 14 agents and we don't hire just just anybody. You know, we actually actually turned a few people down uh, that wanted to come work for us. We want to make sure our name um, is in good standing with the city of, of West Sac. The other thing is that Almost all of our agents not only, you know, specialize here, here in West Sac, but they live here too. So, um, you know, all of us really know the West Sac market uh, inside and out. Hmm. So, Okay, thank you. That's true. Um, do you want me to ask the, the Yeah, question? go ahead. Okay. So what do you see as far as trends here in West Sacramento and in real estate? So, you know, in 19, I'm going to call it 1999 is really? when... Five. I was I was four and a half. Yeah. <laughs> no, I had just graduated from high school, and I, I remember the Pheasant Club at the time was the only thing that was out in the South Port. I mean, obviously there were homes, but there was no there were no commercial. The Pheasant Club was off by by itself, and in 1999, that's when really development started to hit. Now, obviously, you see the Nugget, you see Target, everything surrounding the, the Pheasant Club. That's when you know later, eventually, Bridgeway Lakes, Bridgeway Island. All the homes on the east side of Jefferson, all that really developed. So we've seen West Sac come a long, long ways. And obviously there's room for for more developments. Um, The cool thing is, you know, Yarborough States, hopefully that gets up and running. I know you're a big golfer, Armando, so that'd be nice to see. Um, And then over in the... I'm a a golfer. You don't need to say my size. (laughs) (laughs) Really? Anyways. Anyways. Um, And then, you know, over in the Bridge District, West Sac is doing a great job. Um, and for trends, I mean, we, I can see real estate continuing to be strong here in West Sac. You have, you're so close to, to the downtown area, the capital. Um, a lot of the newer developments over by Rayleigh Field, you can walk to work if you uh, work in the downtown area. Um, then you have the downtown arena, again, all within walking distance. So I think West Sac uh, will continue to be strong here in the uh, future. My father-in-law is a, uh, on the planning commission for the city of Sacramento, and they have a lot of cool things that are being planned and developed in the city of downtown Sacramento. And I really think that's going to benefit us completely. And, and I think you know, in the long run, we have a, a clean slate right there near the near the uh, ballpark, and we can really if we can really develop that as a, a cool area for people to come in and 
and yep. spend some dollars. Absolutely. Um, and you know, one of the things that people complain about, I, I often hear, is like, I love what, living in West Sac. And then it, they always, or they tend to follow it up with, there's just no place to eat, you know. But I think with those developments, you'll find those places. Uh, we won't have to be going over the river as yep. much. And, uh, but as far as um, home, like home values and stuff, um, I think we're going to really benefit because we don't have the, you know, the tall buildings and stuff like that. We have a nice neighborhoods that you can, but we're so close to downtown. Right. Absolutely. So we can benefit from all that Sacramento has to offer too. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. No, that's great. All right. So, uh, now we get into some fun questions. <laughs> no, they're not really, I, they're pretty tame. All right. Okay. I, I sure hope so. All right. <laughs> my, my wife is likely listening, so okay, let's keep so it good. real tame. Good. <laughs> Okay, so before you were an, a, re, a real estate all-star agent, you were a mixologist at Club Pheasant, as I was. you described. Yep. Uh, without saying any names, protect the innocent. What was the craziest thing you saw as a bartender at Club Pheasant? <laughs> well, Pheasant Club is more of a tame place. Um, we did have a little bit of nightlife, you know, after Friday, Saturday night, after 9 o'clock or so. We get a lot of locals and stuff. You know, I, I don't know if there's one single event. I do remember a couple of times there were a few girls that would jump up, up on top of the bar. And for an Italian restaurant, a family-style restaurant, it was shocking to see someone get up on top of the oh, bar. Yeah. So that was, that was interesting. But even more so, just the conversations that I would overhear. Not so much I was talking to people, but I would – my ears would be wandering and listening to people talk. It's like, whoa, okay, I – Talking about getting some West Sac scoop. That was uh, that was that was <laughs> nice. the place. That was the place You're to be. Rinsing a class. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> well, that's kind of you know that, that I imagine that's that's as a bartender that's what you normally hear. But like in West Sacramento, since it's kind of relatively small, you can learn a lot pretty quick. I oh, mean. absolutely. No, and especially before West Sac got big. Again, before 1999 or so, West Sac was even smaller, yeah. and, and and it still is. I mean, I still get people yeah. that. You know, oh, they you know they know my family, and, and you know it's just it's that still has that small town feel. Nice. I've been in the restaurant, and I've seen people come in, and they'll say hi to your dad, and you can tell that they and oh they'll say I've been coming here since 1965. Oh you yeah, know, they're still regular. So that's really something neat about that. Yep, and they you know even older folks will say, hey my my grandparents used to take me here when I was little. You know, they nice. opened they they bought the restaurant the building in 1935, so it's been there for a long time. Yeah. Nice. Great history. Great part of West Sac. Yeah. Uh, you have a question? Uh, I did have one, kind of about that. Um, so your family has been here for a few generations. Um, do you know why your family originally chose this area to settle in? That's a very good question. So they actually, the my great-grandfather was a farmer in Clarksburg. Oh. Um, so he farmed a lot of land there. And so they found the restaurant eventually. Um the building itself um, wasn't – it was much smaller than what it is today. But they bought the building and I believe 10 acres for a whopping $5,000 back in 1935. Nice. So, yeah, talking about real estate values going, going up. <laughs> um, so, you know, they just – they saw this area. Um, he, he was a farmer. Obviously, back then there was farmland all around. And uh, they never really left. Came here, settled, and the rest is history. Nice. Now, the fifth question, or uh, this is the last question. That's kind of a two-part question. All right. Now, first, is there any truth to the rumor that you were named Chris Palmadesi to have the same initials as the restaurant because <laughs> you were the heir apparent to run the show? And secondly, um, I've had the honor of sitting down with your grandpa a couple times and, and spoke to him about the history of Club Pheasant. Now, uh, he told me, like, he still goes every Monday uh, to the restaurant, participates in making the thousands of the raviolis that yep. we all like. Yep. Have you ever done that? Okay. So, first question. Uh, taking over the restaurant. So, I worked there ever since I was little. I have a, I have three kids, and ever since I was their age, I started working there. I mean, it was I was there since day one. And I, I honestly, I envisioned myself probably working there for, for the rest of my life. As I got older, I just, yeah, the real estate, I'm sorry, the restaurant business just wasn't, I don't think it was cut out for me. So ended up moving on, um, obviously. So, um, no, I don't think it was, I was named after <laughs> my initials, <laughs> shockingly enough, no. Um, 
And uh, so the raviolis. Yeah, I you know I've actually never done it myself. I've watched my dad do it numerous times, and they do do it every Monday. And actually, my kids, especially Christian, loves to go there and watch his papa make the raviolis. He gets a kick out of it. We have a huge machine in the back, and they whip those things up. Uh, it's very, very cool. I think I've had pretty much every single job there at the Pheasant Club. Bartended, waited tables, um, bus tables, did some work in the kitchen, very little. Um, so, yeah, I think I've done pretty much it all. That's cool, man. Yeah. Well, uh, you're a good sport with um, with your question. Now, if, if some of our listeners want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to get a hold of you or find you online uh, yep. for your real estate company? Yep. So you could always Google Capital West Realty. Um, but mine specific uh, is uh, my name, chrispalmedse.com. And obviously most people don't know how to spell it. P A L A. M I D E S S I. So www.chrispalmedessi.com. Always available on my cell phone, also 916-834-7003. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thank you. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Yeah. Well, that uh, wraps up our first episode of Flippin' Tacos. Again, please like us on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Uh, subscribe to us via iTunes. Download us and listen to, listen to us while you shop at the Nugget, clean your toilets at home, or doing yard work. Tune into us and get tuned into your city. Until next time, for Yvonne Scarborough and Chris Palmadesi, our guest, this is Armando Omega. Be well and have a great week.